I'm Dr. Gleisner and I'm talking about the size and mass of atoms. Uh, atoms are very small and I've got a, a good picture that I can show you there. Hang on. Uh, it's from NASA and it basically uh, gives you a, uh, a feeling in terms of the length of uh, the, the waves that we define in the electromagnetic spectrum and I will be talking about that in my physics stuff. Um, and you can see that uh, the as the wavelength gets very short, we are getting to the size of uh, atoms and atomic nuclei. These are the most high energy uh, photons that we have. And you can see that uh, um, the visible uh, wavelengths light are around sort of um, amoeba and, and uh, quite similar to sort of the size of um, um, uh, larger structures than molecules, which means that you can't resolve with visible light, light any uh, thing that is smaller uh, than the wavelength is long. So you can't actually see molecules, atoms or whatever with or anything smaller or nuclei uh, uh, even with uh, just a, a light, uh, a normal light microscope. So what we are going to um, briefly uh, point out is that the size of an atom is incredibly small. So it's one ten thousandth of uh, one ten thousandth. It's a 0.1 nanometer, which is about one time times ten to the minus ten uh, meters, which is uh, also sometimes called an angstrom, represented by an A with a uh, circle over it, uh, Scandinavian unit, which is no longer in use uh, much. The radius of a nucleus is less than, uh, this is where the one ten thousandths comes in, uh, than that of the, uh, the atom. So if you've got a, uh, an atom's um, uh, radius, then the, the nucleus in the middle, and that takes up um, uh, one less than one ten thousandths of, uh, of that size, of that radius. Um, almost all of the mass, however, is in that tiny little dot there. Now, I've, I've drawn a hard boundary here, but actually what that is, is just probability. So the what happens is that you've got electrons running around this uh, boundary, not as chaotically maybe even as I'm drawing it, okay? And they are going around, they're going around this dot in the middle. And they're describing this uh, uh, round shape, basically. And by describing it, what they're doing is they're, they're giving it sort of uh, a little bit of negative charge every time they sort of pass around uh, the outside, okay? And um, this explains, for example, why when two um, atoms, uh, or when, when matter, two bits of matter come together, you can't just press your finger through the table or through a book or whatever. Because the idea is that even though it's pretty much empty space, right, almost all of the mass of an atom is in the nucleus, the electrons are running around, they have very little of the mass, they just describe this shell type thing. And you, when two atoms come together, uh, what happens is that the outer shell, which is basically uh, negative, right, it's sort of this shell, which I've, which I've just said is just a mass of uh, electrons running around there, a number of electrons are running around there, and that's so it's vaguely negatively charged on the outside. When that gets uh, to another one, right, in the same situation, then you have this uh, repulsion between those two sort of almost like shells because they're going so quickly. If you looked at it, it would it would look like a force field, I guess, right? So um, th the uh, I'll explain how. Uh, then atoms can actually bond together and that we'll do that later. Um, but if you imagine that's that's part of your finger, that's part of the table, that's how sort of the outside of your finger is basically has these electrons running around it and the table has uh, electrons uh, going around nuclei uh, on the outside as well. And that basically repels, uh, it, they repel each other. Okay. So then we need to learn that uh, the um, relative mass of protons and neutrons, which is of course what is in the nucleus, is one. And again, you can express that in kilograms and the, the number would be incredibly small, small and very difficult to handle. So what we've just said is we've just given it one unit, one atomic mass unit. And that's, that's what is in the middle uh, for each of these. Uh, protons and neutrons actually don't have exactly the same mass, but it's near enough not to make a difference for us. And uh, I might talk about that a little bit later. And then you've got uh, electrons around the outside. And again, 
this is uh, not a hard shell. This is um, uh, or the shell is not a hard uh, surface. It's just it describes the orbit. So if if you imagine this is the sun, the planetary system, uh, the the solar system is quite uh, analogous here. The sun has most of the mass. The electrons are the like the planets going around the outside, and they're held in by a force as well. Uh, it's gravity in the case of the solar system, and it's uh, el uh, electrostatic attraction between positive and negative charges in in, in this case. Um, so that's the shell. And then we've got uh, protons. They are the positively charged uh, particles and neutrons, and they have got about the same sort of mass. And then we've got uh, electrons, and they've got one two thousandths the mass of either a proton or a neutron. Some people say one eighteen hundred and sixty six sixth. It's uh, difficult to say for me, especially with a lisp as well. So th that's that's uh, even even closer to that. But it the, it says in the specification very small. Another good word to use is negligible. The mass is so small as to almost not matter, and that is what we call negligible. OK, so then you need to know how to describe atoms. Um, and I'm already uh, uh, over my uh, envisaged time because I've gobbed on so much about other things. But I'll just do that very quickly. So if you've got an element, I'm going to call it element X. In the specification, you've got the example of sodium. Uh, you've got a number at the top. So you've got uh, a number at the top here. Let's call that 100. And at the bottom, you've got 50. And at the bottom, you've got the number of protons. And at the top, you've got the number of protons and neutrons. So you can get the number of neutrons by taking away the smaller number from the bigger number. So that would give you a number of 50 neutrons here. So why not put 50 neutrons at the top? Well, um, because actually the mass number, which is the top number, which is has most of the mass of the um, atom in it for our purposes is actually more useful for chemists than just the number of neutrons. So you'd have to do another calculation to get the number, the mass number back. And the, the, the bottom number is good for identity identification purposes because the bottom number tells you exactly what uh, element you've got. So if you've got 50 protons, then you have a specific element. If it's if you've got 11 protons, you only ever have sodium. So that's what you need to do. And I'll see you in the next video. OK, so some rando on YouTube challenged me to teach people for free. So I'm doing that now. GCC, A-level, chemistry, physics, whatever you like. Let me know in the comments, like and subscribe. Thank you.